ano ba yung nakikita natin dun sa mga HR trends natin nowadays. So, it's okay. So, um, dito, according to Forbes, one or, um, these are just some of the many, uh, many ongoing trends na nakikita na natin nowadays. So, according to Forbes, uh, the first one is make the employee's well-being a top business uh, mandate. So, what do we mean by this one? A lot of the employees nowadays are burned out, okay? Yung pagod na for some reason, okay? And um, they cite a lot of stressors, especially that there is um, a lack of separation between work and home, okay? There is this unmanageable workloads. There are these worries when it comes to job security that is brought to us by the pandemic. Dahil nga sa nagkaroon tayo ng pandemic, we are forced to work remotely. Um, we are forced to stay indoors at the same time um, because of these factors. Parang hindi mo na alam kung um, saan exactly yung uh, separation na mangyayari between the work that you have and of course, uh, your responsibilities na kailangan mo gawin para sa mga trabaho mo or dun sa trabaho na kailangan mo i-fulfill. So, a lot of um, the employees nowadays have this um, burned out feeling, okay? Um, with all honesty, uh, ako, pagod na din ako, eh. pagod na ako actually. And um, sometimes, you, uh, well, some days are harder than the others, okay? Parang, um, sometimes it's okay and ang dami namin um, deadlines and namin kailangan gawin and all that. Uh, but sometimes talaga parang hindi mo na rin alam kung sin ka lulugar uh, dun sa situation. And uh, most of the time, parang um, you don't know what to uh, expect uh, kasi nga parang um, hindi na nagkakaroon ng separation yung bahay mo kung saan ka nagpapahinga and then kung saan ka nagtatrabaho. I have this dedicated work area in, in my house. Um, I try to make sure to separate all of my work and uh, not work beyond my time. I try to do that. So, minsan sumasagot pa rin ako sa mga emails kahit na um, beyond working hours. Okay? But um, I try not to do that. Okay? I try not to do that. So, what employees now want is that there should be opportunity to build skills, develop meaningful relationships, and make a positive and sustainable impact in the world. A lot of us are working because we want to see this fulfillment, this gap na nararamdaman natin, okay, within ourselves. But, um, you know, again, some days are quite harder than the others. Parang sometimes you're okay, okay, na parang okay lang na kami mong trabaho, okay? But yun nga, sometimes. Um, you just want to lay down. And I think that um, a lot of us tend to be guilty when we rest. And I think we all need that. Okay? Parang, kaya nga tayo nagkakaroon ng mga health break, kaya nga tayo nagkakaroon ng mga days na we need time off. Kasi um, we have that burned out feeling. Eh. Okay? And to, to get rid of that, kailangan makahanap ka ulit ng fulfillment, makahanap ka ulit ng some sort of purpose in the things that you are doing as of the moment. And kahit nasa sa edad namin, ha, okay, uh, in our age, it's it's been tough because um, you're forced to have accomplishments, you're forced to, um, to, to, to somehow, you know, excel in the field that you are doing. But again, because of the pandemic, a lot of the plans were, were stopped and a lot of the things I kailangan mo talagang pag-isipan multiple times. And because of that, employers nowadays have to think of the overall well-being of their employees first before anything else. Um, profit will follow if your people are okay. okay? Always remember that your people are your biggest assets. And I think I've uh, said that multiple times um, even before, that your people are your biggest assets in the business, whether we like it or not, which is why we need to take care of them. 
And we have to make sure na iniisip mo kung ano yung kalagayan nila, kung paano sila maapektuhan with all of the decisions that you are doing. The second one is invest in mental health as a must-have rather than a nice-to-have benefit. A lot of uh, the employers nowadays will have this parang health break na, na tinatawag. Parang meron sila mental health awareness na binibigay. They will conduct a lot of uh, webinars, but not just webinars. Some of the companies now have this um, parang mga group sessions. Um, Kansan, you can just simply uh, have that safe space to tell what are your stressors, kung ano yung nakakapagpa-stress sa'yo at the moment, and then you get to, you know, um, communicate that with a lot of people. Um, I just think that um, a lot of people are not really open in the discussion of their mental health being. Um a lot of us are still um, seeing it as a stigma. And I just I just think na kailangan lang mas maging open kayo with yourself. Um, you just need to really communicate with the right people. Uh, if you need help, seek help, okay? Um, and a lot of employers nowadays, yun na yung ginagawa nila. Okay, pag na- nakikita nila that the productivity is low, that um you are working remotely you're given flexible time you're given uh, all of these benefits and yet you can't be productive uh but it's the well-being the mental well-being so um most of the time these employers naghahanap sila ng uh, paraan para din i-communicate na okay uh just need you just need a break and uh just come back when you're okay right so Sometimes you just need to have a time alone and reflect on a lot of things. Okay? And I think that's quite helpful. Okay? Third one is provide internal talent mobility to attract, engage, and retain employees. So what do we mean by this one? This is about matching employees to new part-time and full-time roles, as well as stretch assignments and mentoring engagement. So... What we mean here is that a lot of uh, employees nowadays, parang kahit na bagong salta or bagong pasok lang sila, sometimes kasi hindi naman nagtutugma yung kung ano yung pinapos mo dun sa trabaho na gusto mong pasukin. And uh, even though that's the case, um, marami sa kanila or marami dun sa mga job seekers na tanggap na lang din kasi ng tanggap. Okay? Na kahit na anong trabaho, gugustuhin nila as long as it pays, pays the bills. Okay? Kasi, well, pandemic, ang hirap. Marami yun na uh, displace sa mga trabaho. For example, um, when tourism is down, ngayon lang naman tayo nagpipick up eh, with tourism. When tourism was down, a lot of the pilots, nawalan sila ng trabaho or they were forced to retire. A lot of the students na, na parang piloto, okay, na nagpipiloto pa lang, um, kailangan kasi nila ng parang flying hours. Um, kailangan, kailangan nila ng flying hours. And some of them weren't able to fulfill that kasi nga, wala naman silang um, isasakay. So, um, they were forced to make the decision na, okay, wag na lang muna ngayon or hindi na lang muna um, natin tatapusin yung pagiging piloto natin today or uh, this year. Probably because, uh, yun nga, they don't have enough flying hours um, para ma-fulfill yung, yung goal nila na yun. So, uh, isa yun din sa mga naging problema. A lot of FAs and yung mga, um, mga nagtatrabaho sa airlines na nawalan din ng work talaga. I have a lot of friends that are FA and um, some of them naghanap na ng ibang trabaho or naghanap sila na ibang company. Okay? We all know that PAL right now is experiencing, um, I wouldn't say they're bankrupt, pero uh, hirap sila when it comes to um, earning a lot of profits. Kaya nga, lahat ng sale na kaya nilang gawin just to um, sell some seats um, sa aeroplano ginagawa din nila. And all of them are trying their best naman. Uh, it, it just so happened na yun nga, a lot of people are still afraid of the whole COVID situation. 
and uh, ang hirap mag-enjoy with, um, you know, at the back of your mind, eh, baka mamaya magka-COVID ba, di ba? So, uh, I'd rather not, okay? So, even though na parang, uh, ano na ba tayo? Level 2? Level 2 na ba? Level 2 na here in Manila, um, I don't really go out that much kasi I'm really afraid. Um, I live in a condo now and kahit na elevator na nakoconscious ako, I, I don't like, I have this anxiety when it comes to a lot of people and I'm a very social person. So, um, um, when the pandemic started, it really hit me um, na parang, how do I see my friends? How do I communicate with other people? How do I interact with my clients and all that? If um, nakikita ko lang sila sa screen. Okay? Kahit ngayong pagtuturo, it's harder for us than uh, guys, di lang kayo nahihirapan. Okay? We don't have any form of feedback that we receive from you guys. And um, I think, siguro, medyo choppy pa ako. Super, super choppy ba? Oh my gosh. Okay. Nagpuputol-putol lahat. Ah, sige, wait lang. Just give me two minutes. Hello? Is it better or napuputol pa rin? Nag-choppy pa rin ba? Hi? Okay na. Okay. I don't know what's happening eh. Okay. So, okay. Proceed. Nandasa na ba ako? Okay. For us teachers, okay, alam ko guys, kayo, nahihirapan din kayo with this whole setup and a lot of us are rushing to go back to school. And to be honest, masaya naman talaga. But ako, I'm not sure if, let's say, nag-face-to-face na ako gusto yung ko pa magturo. Kasi, um, yun nga, uh, this anxiety has built up already to me na I am very conscious when it comes to a lot of people. I don't go to malls during the weekends. I I try to stay indoors during the weekends kasi ang daming na, ang daming nakalabas. Okay, I, I try to process everything na kailangan kong going outside in one day to compress it, to limit uh, my my contact with other people. So, isa yun dun. I think, um, isa yun dun sa mga proseso na ginagawa ko. So, um, when I when I heard na magkakaroon na tayo face-to-face or whatsoever in the near uh, future and probably next year, baka face-to-face na kayo, to be honest. Okay, with this whole um, pandemic easing down so fast, probably uh, mag-face-to-face na kayo next, uh, next year. So, um, hindi ko lang sure okay, kung gugusin ko pa mag-teach. Okay, kasi gano'n ako, yung kid. Okay, pero um, you know what? It's, it's also hard for us kasi we don't get to have uh, feedbacks na uh, from you guys. Wala kami natatanggap na kahit na ano. Uh, sometimes magtatanong kami, tapos parang blank lang or walang sumasagot. Sometimes naman, um, well, screen lang yung nakikita namin. Wala talaga nag-open ng camera at all. And we cannot really force you then to do that kasi some of you have privacy issues or uh, maingay sa bahay ninyo. Okay? Hindi naman lahat tayo merong area kung saan, kung saan tayo uh, nag-aaral or saan tayo nakakapag-process na maayos. So, uh, we need to understand that also. But I just hope that you guys also know that you're not the only ones that are having a hard time. Um, even us. Okay? Um, na on the other side, medyo nahihirapan din kami. Okay? Next is uh, prepare for hybrid office and uh, uh, prepare for the hybrid office of the future. So, um this work from home setup is being done by a lot of companies already and most of them are fixed na situation na siya. so they some some um companies let their employees choose uh whether they like to work on site or they want to remain let's say at home and 
study there or that they work from there. Right? Bakit siya nagiging helpful then for a lot of companies? One is, hindi natin ginagamit yung um, kuryente ng kumpanya. Okay? Mas nagiging less yung operating expenses nila. Uh, but at the same time, some companies naman have additional benefits to compensate kung ano yung um, ginagastos ni employer. Okay? Ni employee pala. So, some companies nagbibigay sila ng additional benefits such as parang sila magbabayad ng internet mo, they would provide you, uh, let's say, a budget for you to work on your work-from-home setup uh, para makabili ka ng, let's say, um, ng desk, maka, makapag-invest ka sa magandang laptop or whatsoever. Some companies naman, nagbibigay sila ng mismong equipment, nagbibigay sila ng laptops uh, para dun sa mga... Um, employees nila, okay? Um, a lot of people or a lot of companies rather, um, ganun na din yung situation kasi nga mas, mas okay. Parang some people kasi are way more comfortable working from their house uh, rather than going on site, okay? So with that, they have to decide um, parang ano mga activities na kailangan nilang gawin in terms of their productivity, making the the, the employees more focused, more driven, even though that they are working remotely. So, uh, with home and uh, satellite offices, workers can decide whether to work based on the activity they are doing, focused work, online collaboration, team brainstorming, or in-person employee briefing. So, these are activities that have, um, well, employer employers are now prepared to do and offer okay um i recently have a job na uh it's a big career jump when it comes to um my personal profession um i've been hired for this particular company for an executive position so um i i've been working okay uh with them in terms of um, creating solutions um, for for smaller enterprises and big corporations. And to be honest, sobrang nasistress na ako lately. Okay? Nasistress na ako lately. But um, it's actually fulfilling um, for me uh, also that I get to do that particular job and I feel blessed to, to do that in the comfort of my house. Um, instead na nandun ako sa Makati nakikipagsapalaran, di ba? Um, not everyone has that, okay? Um, and I, I'm ha- I'm just happy that uh, they provided me with that particular benefit, okay? Now, as um, a teacher naman, okay, as a teacher in senior high school, okay, uh, with full disclosure, um, wala kami natatanggap na benefit at all. Um, I'm a part-time teacher and I've been teaching um, in the university for four years already, I think. Okay, for four years. And we are not really uh, given any form of benefit. We lang part-time kami. Um, we're only compensated based on the time that we render for you. Um, kung ano yung scheduled hours namin, yun lang. Other than that, wala na. Um, kailangan namin magturo um, sa bahay namin. We have to buy our own equipment. Uh, we need to make sure that everything's stable, everything's okay. We have to adjust and all that. But there's no assistance um, that is being given to us. And I think, isa yun din sa mga kulang, okay, ng, ng USD talaga. Um, ang naalagaan lang is yung mga regular employees nila. Okay, yung mga tenured faculty, but for us, for us part-timers, we're not really taken care of. And hopefully, it would change. Okay, kasi, well, the pandemic's been two years already, and there's no actual change that is happening. So, we'll see. Hopefully, in the future. So, that's, that's one of the trends. So, as an employee of UST, uh, I get to complain on on that particular factor kasi marami na nga yung mga employers then from outside that are doing such a good job in providing such assistance to a lot of their employees. So the last one would be the expand employee experience and well-being resources to the entire family unit. So 
this is in connection with the number four. Bakit? Since you are working from home, a lot of employers would not just give benefits that benefit the employee. Kasi dati yung magaganda benefit is like, let's say, healthcare. Um, they would give you, let's say, um, 10,000 cap na lahat ng medicine or mga reseta na kailangan mo personally, you have to have tests for example, and then nasa probationary period ka pa lang. So let's say 10,000 worth of what you need in terms of your medical, healthcare, um, ipoprovide ni company. So isa yun dun sa mga ginagawa nila. Dati it's a good um, benefit for an employee. Now kasi, as part of uh, the HR 10, the benefit should not only benefit the employee itself, but also the entire family. Meaning, um, let's say, the employer, yung magbabayad ng Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi is not only being used by the employee, but, but the whole family. Okay? Some BPO companies, ganun yung situation nila. So magbibigay sila ng um, budget para pang Wi-Fi ng buong family at the same time. They would provide, let's say, groceries. They would provide um, additional allowances for uh, electric bills. Isa yun dun sa mga binibigay ng ibang kumpanya. Kasi nga, the benefit should also extend to um, the entire family, not just the employee anymore. And I think um, those are big factors for um, an employees to stay. Okay? Uh, a lot of employees to stay nowadays. Okay? Now, moving on from the HR trend, okay, we now study and discuss what is human resource management. Okay? During your tertiary orientation, I think Mang Bang was able to um, quickly say kung ano talaga ang pinag-aaralan natin sa si HR. Uh, ano yung meron when it comes to discussion of your human resources? Well, it is the department of the business or organization that deals with the hiring, administration, and training of personnel. At the same time, it is the planning, organizing, directing, and controlling or of the procurement, development, compensation, integration, maintenance, and reproduction of human resources to the end that individual, organization, and societal objectives are accomplished. So keep it simple. When we talk about human resources, this talks about the personnel, the people within the business. You have or your job is to take care of the people, their mental well-being, um, well-being, um, their their status in life, their productivity, how to make them happy, how to retain them, how to make sure that they are doing the best uh, for the company. So, isa yan din sa mga kinagawa ni HR. So, um, some people kasi parang ang liit ng tingin nila sa human resources or parang, parang for them wala namang ginagawa sa si HR. But in reality, sobrang stressful maging HR kasi you have to ruin and create a lot of relationships. And um, let's say for example, for example, ikaw ang HR. Okay. Ikaw ang naatasan na mag-hire ng mga tao, um, kamustahin sila, at the same time, fire them. Okay? Kapag hindi na sila productive, hindi na sila okay para dun sa kumpanya. And that's a very hard task for me. Okay? Kasi I don't like the feeling of being guilty okay? um, sa, sa isang bagay, okay? sa mga bagay na hindi ko sure kung okay ba. And um, kung ginawa naman niya yung best niya, but hindi pagbigyan. Pero an HR manager cannot think that way. They will always have to take care of the company. At the same time, look at how uh, the people and the productivity of the people could affect the overall growth of the company. So, um, kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng mga union. Okay? For example, Mga employees, yung mga union na meron sila within big uh, corporations sa mga kumpanya. Kaya sila nagkakaroon ng mga union kasi sila yung nakikipag-dialogue. Uh, uh, sila yung nakikipag-discuss uh, uh, sa mga HR 
um, managers kung ano yung mga benepisyo na gusto nila, kung ano yung mga compensations that they would want uh, based from what they know also, what they think is fair. So there should be a win-win situation between your HR and the union leaders or the union itself para magkaroon talaga ng healthy work culture within the company. Okay? Next is this one. So the roles of HR are these three foundations. Okay? So we have attraction, retention, and optimization. So ano yung purpose nila? Ano yung ginagawa nila? Now, the role, the major role of HR is of course to attract. They are concerned with sourcing and placement, uh, psychometric interviews, um, exam, online, um, personality profile, yun yung mga uh, ginagawa nila in order for them to recruit the right people. Okay? We all know that HR is concerned with, um, of course, the recruitment process of the business. So um, through the, this particular rule, they get to collect a okay, sea of people na sa tingin nila fit with the kind of culture that the company have or the kind of business that uh, well, the business have. So, um, in-analyze nila kung ano yung mga pangangailangan, they will post um, a job description. Now, based from that job description, a lot of um, um, people na gusto maging empleyado nila ang magsasubmit ng resume. Okay? In creating your resume, you don't have to make it aesthetic. Okay? Keep it simple. The most um, that you could do is one page lang. Okay? One page lang. Huwag kayong lalagpas sa isang page lang. And you don't have to lay out it ng sobrang bongga. Okay? Uh, in reality, you have to make sure that what you highlight in your resume is designed based on the company na papasukan ninyo. Okay? If you are, let's say, applying for a creative um, job or let's say you are concerned with, um, let's say, art-related, yung gusto ninyo, siguro layouting your, your overall resume could be helpful para makita nila kung ano yung talent na meron ka or what I have when it comes to the art process. But um, for formal uh, business, let's say desk job or yung mga strategic jobs or other type of job, you don't have to lay out your resume. An HR manager only has, let's say, 10 seconds. 10 seconds to scan kung interesado ba sila dun sa resume mo o hindi. Okay? That's why you can't give them a lengthy one. Kung magbibigay ka ng mga three-pager na uh, resume, hindi nila yung titignan lahat. Okay, hindi niyan titignan lahat. So, you, what you need to highlight are only accomplishments that are related with the job. Okay? Now, second one is retention. Once you're inside the company, their job now is to make you engage with others. Um, their job now is to help you uh, grow with the company, help you, let's say, um, find um, what is the most um, efficient way of doing things. So how do they do that? They have employee engagement. So they have to make sure that there are group activities, they're um, they're a team player, for example. So paano nila makikita yun? Kailangan ma-immerse ka din, nakasama yung ibang tao. So let's say you have uh, highlighted na may leadership skills ka. So they will um, put you in a team wherein you have to lead a lot of people in order for them to actually see kung ano yung meron ka. There's this probationary period um, that is being practiced by all companies and that is, um, I think the the average is six months, six months of probationary period. So in that probationary period, you will have um, two evaluations you will be evaluated after three months um, and then you will be evaluated after six months. So in the first three months ng um, activity na ginagawa mo, they will tell you if you have, if anong area yun dapat ini-improve mo. Anong mga um, um, kakulangan yung nakita nila sa inyo, sa iyo, so that um, in the next three months, ma-adjust mo siya. Okay. Now, after six months, then sila magda-decide if they're going to keep you or they have to let you go. Okay? So that is part of the retention. Now, 
Um, I just want to get this conversation with you guys. Okay, I know that we have this um debate. Okay, when it comes to um, anong tawag dito? contractualization. Okay, um, Jollibee has been well. Um, they were victims of the cancel culture. Also, I think that was a year ago or two years ago before the pandemic. Nagkaroon sila ng mga issue. Nutri-Asia also had this issue kung saan um, yung mga contractual uh, workers nila um, nag-rally na and all. Kaya, kaya we were um, petitioning na parang sana maging regular employees na sila lahat. Okay? But to be honest, okay, there is a reason why this is happening. And uh, the only reason is these big companies need to do that in order for them for or them to see na meron pa silang pera na ibabayad. Bakit? Um, contractual worker doesn't have a lot of benefit. Hindi same yung beneficyo na nakukuha ng isang contractual worker at ni regular worker. Right? If you've been there for like three years, three, four, five years, okay? Being contractual is somehow okay lang. Okay? Okay pa yun. Kasi um, gini-gauge ni company kung ano yung status na magbibigay nila sa inyo. And let's say for the next two years, hindi ka pa rin nare-regular dun sa mismong kampanya na yun. Just get out of it. Okay? Um, malis ka na. Kasi um, there's no way na mare-regular ka. Dahil um, they don't see the value that you have for their company, which is why contractual ka pa rin. Okay? Now, um, bakit kinikip nila yung mga employees kahit na, let's say, 20 years na tapos contractual pa rin? Um, kinikip nila yan kasi they don't like to hire other people, especially if um, train mo na naman siya. Okay? Um, most of the contractual workers, sila yung merong mga routinary jobs. Uh, meaning, paulit-ulit yung ginagawa nila. Um, hindi siya hindi siya dynamic um, na uh, kailangan ng deep knowledge or um, parang uh, it could be um, different for any other day hindi siya ganun. so most of the time these contractual workers or the contractual workers um uh, yung trabaho nila are factory work okay yung mga line work yung mga ganun mga ganun trabaho um kaya hindi sila ginagawang regular ng mga um kumpanya. Now, bakit? Bakit kunasabi na parang somehow um medyo okay, bakit uh, medyo hindi? Kasi uh, again, kapag ni regular nila, let's say I have 50,000 people. Okay? Let's say 50,000 yung empleyado ko. Let's say ako si JFC. Okay? Kapag yan lahat ay ni regular ko, lahat yan bibigyan ko ng additional compensation, lahat yan bibigyan ko ng additional benefits my company might suffer and might go bankrupt kasi wala nang additional funds na pumapasok para ibigay ko sa kanila kasi nga um parang lahat naman sila ay regular na okay most of the cashiers that we see these are contractual workers most of the uh, kitchen staff na nakikita natin these are contractual workers why if you are no longer 100% efficient they have this ability to just let you go Okay, pwedeng palitan ka. Your position in the company determines kung magiging contractual ka or hindi. If you don't get promoted and nandung ka pa rin sa mga, yun nga, yung routinary jobs, kung saan hindi siya, or uh, paulit-ulit yung ginagawa mo, you just uh, do uh, the same thing over and over, mabilis palitan yung mga ganong trabaho. Okay? Kaya mahirap. Okay? Uh, mas stuck sa ganun. So, kung kung gusto mo na maging regular, if you want to be a regular employee, you have to make sure that you were able to put in the work at the same time, be promoted. Kapag hindi ka na po promote dyan sa company na yan, ibig sabihin, hindi nila nakikita yung value mo. Um, in the two years, two years lang, it's, it's, it's all it takes. Okay? Just two years and if you don't see that you... Uh, or the company is eyeing you for a promotion, just get out of it. Okay? Kasi baka mas stuck ka and tumagal ka sa ganyang sitwasyon na contractual at contractual ka lang. Okay? 
So, as much as possible, people are afraid to switch jobs. Okay? Ibang-iba tayo kaysa sa mga Amerikano. Okay? In the Western culture, uh, there's this um, massive resignation that is being done uh, in the U.S. nowadays. Um, they have been reporting it left and right. People are, most of the millennials, are quitting their jobs. Okay, bakit? If hindi na sila masaya, if hindi na sila compensated well, if hindi na um, napapakinggan yung well-being nila, they just simply quit. Okay, but Filipinos are different eh. Okay, for us Filipinos, parang, um, ito na yung trabaho para sa akin. And nakakatakot na maghanap ka ng ibang trabaho because there are no other opportunities out there. To be honest, yun yung totoong problema. Okay? Wala na talagang masyadong opportunities um, in the Philippines. And it's a scary thought na, uh, let's say kayo, makagraduate nga kayo. How sure are you that you will find the job right away? How sure are you that you will... Uh, be uh, compensated with um, the knowledge that you were able to have throughout your college experience, we not in alam yun. Okay? So, um, that contractualization is, is a big, big dialogue to discuss. Kahit ngayon, 13 month, okay, yung 13 month pay na forced yung mga employers now na uh, magbigay sa mga employee. Okay? Kasi nga, um, those are additional income para sa, sa mga um, empleyado, okay? Pero marami pa rin yung mga employers na hindi nagbibigay ng 13 month pay, okay? Kahit na kaya naman nila. Kasi nga, uh, mahirap para sa kumpanya ngayon dahil nga pandemic, okay? Wala namang kinikita and pag binigay mo kung ano yung cash flow na meron ka, baka yung buong kumpanya yung mag-suffer and you just end up just closing down your business. And of course, you don't want that. Okay? So, the third one is optimization. So, for optimization, this is about learning and development, talent management, session planning. Now, uh, for me, though, the most important thing that you have to um, see here is there should be succession planning. Meaning, if you are good at what you do, let's say, you are the CEO of the company. You have to make sure that you are training somebody else to do that also. Why? It could be a very huge problem kapag nawala ka um, dun sa mismong kumpanya. Um, some companies work that way na parang they keep it a secret or uh, family members lang yung um, ginag ginagamit nila ng mga tao para dun sa... Um, dun sa mismong um, position na meron sila. Okay. For example, we have um, the C family from uh, SM. Okay. Hopefully, familiar naman kayo siguro kala Henry C, diba? Um, sa buong pamilya nila. All of the businesses of the C family, um, hindi, na mag, hindi naging mahirap yung transition nun nawala si Henry C. Okay? Kasi they have a very, very good succession planning. Um, during the time na tumatanda na si Henry C, okay, um, parang lumaki na, nang lumaki yung kumpanya niya, they were able to retain the number one spot uh, as the richest here in the Philippines at the time. Kasi nga, um, lahat naman sila, diba? they're dominating in all of their areas. They're dominating when it comes to SM Prime. They have SM Investments. They have SM. Okay? And these are real estate businesses and kailangan na maraming um, plano. Okay? And because of that, they try to make sure na yung mga anak niya, ni Henry C, they, uh, he was able to give certain positions and ginalingan naman talaga nila. Okay? They were CEOs of um in, in their own fields and um in their own area. So somebody else is handling SM Prime, somebody else was handling SM investment, somebody else was handling all the other SM um na kailangan nilang ma involve tapos ginagalingan nila doon. Okay? Um lahat sila nag-groom na maayos para gawin kung ano yung mga kailangan nilang gawin. So by the time that Henry C. said goodbye to the world, okay, and namatay siya, may hindi man lang gumalaw yung stock price nila. Okay? May hindi man lang naapektuhan 
yung uh, stock price nila kasi nobody was scared okay that what ha- what what's going to happen next blah 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 kasi hindi nakakatakot kasi nga maganda yung succession planning nila so even though that Henry C was um let's say the 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 creator the CEO of that particular company before um everybody else was already running their own show so hindi na siya mahirap Even if you look at the top 10 richest um, Filipinos we have now, nandun pa rin yung pamilya nila. Okay? Um, nandun pa rin yung mga, mga seed. So, I think three out of um, the 10, sila yun nandun. So, may, mayayaman talaga. Okay? Now, JFC, for example, Solomie Corporation. Um, we know that the CEO of the company or the face of the company is Tony Tan Kakyong. Okay, but the thing is, he doesn't have a very good succession plan. Okay, a lot of the investors are scared that um, Tony Tan is already at what age? Okay, and when he dies, um, ano mangyayare? Bakit natatakot yung mga investors for that one? A lot of people are already pulling out their stocks in Jollibee because they've been um, all over the place. Marami silang investments na hindi masyado maganda. Let's say before the pandemic, they bought coffee bean. A coffee bean is already um uh, losing a lot of cash flow. Ah, uh, marami na yung nagsasara ng mga branches nila, and they tried to save it, pero pandemic happened. So lugi na nga sila na lugi pa, lalo. So that was a very bad investment for um Jolly Bean Corp. Ah, uh, at that time. So um when it comes to succession planning, succession planning takes a lot of time. Uh, but even though that it is um, somehow a family-owned business din naman yung kala to ni Tan Kakyong, um, hindi nagiging mahusay yung, um, yung mga decisions nila when it comes to their investments. Which is why, again, investors, a lot of investors are quite scared that if he um, dies or he leaves the company, what would happen to the whole JFC? Lahat kasi ng magagandang plano nang galing sa kanya. Lahat ng mga magagandang kumpanya na na-acquire, it was closed by him also. So, um, all of these things um, are, are uh, things na kailangan pag-isipan ng isang um, HR manager din. Okay? So, the next one is, now, we proceed with the actual. Okay? Um, eight hours of HR. So, We have the four major HR function. We have people strategic function. We have operational people. We also have systemic operational, this one. And uh, the quadrant A, we have strategic system function of HR. So this is how you align your people, your HR with the whole thing or the process in the business. So you have the strategic people, operational, and system. Now with that, paano sila nag-overlap? ano yung mga kailangan gawin ni HR to compensate and uh, make sure that everything is well aligned. These quadrants follows each other. Okay? Um, connected sila, intertwined sila together, um, and lahat yan pwede mag-overlap. Okay? Your strategic system is um, aligning your HR strategy with your institutional strategy. Your people strategic is all about strategic uh, transformation of the organization to its people. So um, this one, operational people, is making sure that through your um, your operations, you are able to empower all of the employees that you have. There should also be congruence okay, that is happening within the company. And lastly, of course, you have systemic operational administering the HR system, so building and growing the organization. Now, dito sa loob niyan, meron tayong tinatawag na 8 hours of HR. So we will have to discuss this one by one. Again, guys, this is found in your book. You do have the copy of the book. Uh, mas maganda, um, basahin niyo din siya kasi it's quite helpful. But uh, also, nailagay ko naman sa PowerPoint. Okay? Nailagay ko naman sa PowerPoint lahat ng mga important factors or points that we need to discuss here. Okay? So, this is the eight R's. Okay? So, we have retooling, recycling, resonating, retaining, routing, recruiting, 
reviewing and rewarding. So kung makikita ninyo, per quadrant, may dala-dalawa silang um, HR functions na ginagawa. Um, with this, uh, there are certain rules that need to be filled um, and the HR uh, managers, the HR functions, sila yung nag-analyze kung paano nila to gagawin. So moving on from that one, we have this one. Okay? Strategic system, which is Quadrant A. So for Quadrant A, this particular quadrant, Quadrant A deals with strategic system. So with strategic system, we have the reviewing and the rewarding. So what happens there? Okay. In this specific quadrant, reviewing is all about diagnosing the organizational performance and designing the right structure, systems, and staffing. So how do you do that? For example, kami, mga teachers. Okay. Kami mga teachers ninyo, you get to evaluate us every semester. Every sem, nakakatanggap kami ng ano yung mga comments, ano yung mga reviews, ano yung mga um, positives and negatives na ma makukuha namin from the students, ano yung opinion ng buong admin sa amin, ano yung opinion ng mga uh, bosses namin with regard to our performance, ano yung opinion din nyo ng mga estudyante when it comes to the overall performance that we give during our teaching sessions. So, evaluation ito. Okay? When we look at reviewing, reviewing is all about um, knowing okay? ano yung status, ano yung totoong ginagawa ng mismong person. So, based from that, how is everything affected? Okay? Next is rewarding. So you see that um, if there are certain employees na maganda yung performance nila, maayos sila magtrabaho, then you have to reward those achievements and accomplishments of the organization and its people. You have uh, to give kung ano yung um, sa tingin ninyong right fit um, para dun sa uh, is it compensation? Is it benefits? Is it uh, additional, let's say, flexible hours? Um, para mas maging okay din yung performance ni employee. So, um, this is the reason why they are connected. Kasi um, sa reviewing, doon mo tinitingnan sino ba yung mga dapat na nire-reward mo within your organization. Okay? So, again, for strategic systems, we have reviewing and rewarding. Next is Quadrant B. For Quadrant B, this is Systemic Operation. Now, for Systemic Operation, it is the programmatic, uh, programmatic, programmatic management of the HR functions as it performs the two major roles administratively assigned to the HR, which is routing and recruitment. Okay? Isa to dun sa mga pinaka, okay? pinaka role or pinaka nakikita natin in an HR function. So, it is routing and recruitment. So, what do we mean by these things? Okay? When we say recruitment, recruitment is hiring people, acquiring people, um, attracting people. So, how do you do that? Well, personally speaking, I hire for attitude and develop for competence. And this has been, um, well, part of the mantra na pinapractice namin within my work culture. Um, as much as possible, pag nag hire kami ng mga empleyado, um, we hire people that are teachable. Okay? Yung kayang turuan, pwedeng turuan. Meron kasing mga empleyado na feeling nila, ang galing-galing na nila, or kayang-kaya nila, or um, sila na yun the best in their field, or in the best in what they do. And because of that, parang puro hangin na lumalabas. Okay? Parang wala na silang uh, maambag talaga masyado dun sa mismong kumpanya kasi nga Parang you can't work with criticisms anymore. So um, what we try to make sure that um, within the company, we care for attitude and then just develop whatever skills that they have. Okay? Hindi naman sa hindi kami nag ng skilled na tao. Okay? But um, skills can be learned. Attitude is kind of hard then. Okay? So recruitment describes the enterprise hiring systems and the process of which an applicant must go through in order to be considered for the job. The main concern of this stage is choosing the right people with the right competencies, values, and attitudes that coincide with the enterprise itself. So we have um, different recruitment criteria that I am showing you here. First one is the 
Sounds performance. The next is proficiency profile. Next is personality profile, psychological profile, personal character, and the potential for growth. Now, when we look at past performance, you look at your resume. You look at the resume. Let's say, based from the track record, ano yung ginagawa ng mismo employee? For example, pumunta ka sa isang kumpanya, you were hired, and you stayed there for three months or six months. Okay, dun sa probationary period mo. Tapos, um, you, you switch to another company, and then uh, they hired you, and then you stayed there for another six months. Okay, pumunta ka na naman sa isa pang company, and then you stayed there for like five months. Okay, and now you're trying to go inside my company. Tapos, uh, I'm seeing all of these track records. Now, what is it telling me? Okay, um, based dun sa track record na nakikita ko dun sa mismong um, uh, resume na binigay mo sa akin. Okay, nakita ko na six months ka lang nagsistay sa isang trabaho. Now, ano yung sinasabi nun sa akin? It simply says that you are a jumper. Okay? Ibig sabihin, kapag hindi ka na masaya, you, you simply leave the company. Now, good thing or bad thing ba yun para sa akin? It's a bad thing for me. If I hire you, and then after six months, ay nag, uh, lumipat ka na naman na ibang company, you have all my trade secrets. Okay? You have everything, all of the knowledge that you've acquired in my company. But, I need to hire another person to fit the job that you left. Magtitrain na naman ako. Gastos na naman yun on my end. So, um, I would rather not hire you dahil I see that there's this pattern na nangyayari. Okay? This is the reason why you create a resume. Okay? People, the HR, okay, must read what kind of pattern yun nakikita nila at makikita nila dun sa mismo resume mo. Which is why you need to create such resume based on what company yung in applyan mo. Okay? Next is proficiency profile. Of course, this talks about your intelligence, your skills, and your talents. So you need to highlight again um, kung ano lang yung um, fit para dun sa role. For example, um, you became the, uh, let's say, ikaw ay naging Miss Intrams. Okay, or Miss Senior High, Miss ABM. Okay, let's say yan yung mga nilagay mo sa resume mo. Anong connection nun dun sa trabaho na tinatry mong pasukin? Okay, this is why I don't like the campaign period for a lot of politicians. Okay, kasi minsan yung mga um, uh, ang dito, accomplishments na nilalagay nila are not really connected with their leadership. It's not connected in any way or in any form dun sa kung ano yung services na ma, ma, uh, gagawin nila for us. Okay? Um, this is especially um, done with, uh, what do you call this? Artista. Okay. Artista. Uh, marami sa mga artista na hindi naman talaga okay, um, uh, politiko. Kaya wala rin sila mga po, um background when it comes to politics. And then they would go and um, distribute out their flyers, kung ano mga achievements nila. Let's say, you become the best actress, you become, um, let's say, um, the face of this particular brand. It, it doesn't align with the kind of, um, you know, job that you're trying to seek from these people, okay, na voters in the future. Okay? Um, isa yun dun sa mga kahinaan na meron si Manny Pacquiao to be honest. Um, all of his accomplishments were from his career as a boxer, but none when it comes to his political career. So, I'm, I'm really sad about him because, you know, uh, hindi naman siya mananalo. Okay? Hindi naman talaga siya ata mananalo. Sana matatalino na yung mga botante. Okay? Hindi naman siya mananalo and yet he is exerting Okay, a lot of effort when it comes to his campaign and namimigay siya ng pera. Namimigay siya ng pera. Okay, so, I'm sad. Okay, I do think that Manny Pacquiao is a nice person. Okay, uh, I don't take it against him, but it's politics. Okay, and let's just say, okay, let's just say, okay, let me just get this out. Okay, uh, let's just say na 
voters na dala sa sa pera, okay, uh, nabili nga niya yung buong Pilipinas at binoto siya bilang presidenta. Napakadami ng mga tao na kaya siyang paikutin dahil masyado siyang mabait. Okay? And being nice and being a politician, okay, as a politician, are two things that doesn't align. Okay? It's a parallel thing na hindi yan ever magmimit. Pag mabuti kang tao, hindi ka dapat nagiging politiko. Hindi dapat. Kasi there are a lot of things that are bad when it comes to politics. And you will come um, in decisions or in, in areas wherein you have to really make such decisions na pwede magkaroon ng mga collateral damage. And these are things that cannot be avoided. And you will feel guilty about it. And if you are the kind of person that would feel guilty about those things then don't don't engage in politics so um as much okay as as much as possible okay find the right person to vote okay um i'm just saying don't vote don't vote Manny Pacquiao okay a lot of people will try to ruin him okay um throughout his niceness okay namimigay lang siya ng pera so huwag kayong madala sa ganun Okay, huwag din kayong madala dun sa sinasabi na ibang taka na uh, just accept the money and then vote for the right person or vote for the, the person that you like. Ah, uh, my God. Exhausting yun. Okay? Kawawa naman siya. Next is personality profile. Now, personality profile, okay, I'm seeing here, kagastos lang siya ng pera po. Yes, totoo yun. Kagumagastos lang siya. And he's spending a lot. Okay, biro mo 1,000 per per person yung binibigay niya. That's a lot of money. Okay? Baka lahat ng yaman na naipon niya throughout his career mag-vanish lang in thin air. Um, to tell you, um, he was in this particular party list. Um, uh, ano yun? Yung sa kanila nila Duterte, yung lakas something. Lakas CMD ba yun? PDP laban yan. PDP laban. They were in the same party. They carried Duterte. Um, in 2016, using his money, using Manny Pacquiao's money, he joined that particular party list and the, the party used him to finance everything. And yet, now, hindi man lang siya sinusuportahan ng partido niya. Hindi man lang siya sinuportahan nila, nila Duterte and all that. Kaya, and, you know, parang, ah, Manny Pacquiao, why? Diba? Kaya nag-stay na lang siya sa boxing. I could have loved him. But anyways, now, personality profile. Personality profile, this is all about the personal conduct, behavior, relationship styles, personal disposition. So, um, on the job observation during training, probationary period, this is also done during your in-depth interview, especially if there are multiple interviews being done. Um, let's say, meron mga levels kung saan HR muna yung kakausap sa'yo and then kung sino yung magtitrain sa'yo, kung sino yung CEO of the company. If there's that particular ladder, um, they're trying to see how you would react with different people and how you would, let's say, present yourself um, in, in those conversations. So, they try to check with um, uh, your previous engagements um, through referencing um, kung sino and saan ka galing, ano yung mga akumpanya na pinagtrabahuhan mo and they would ask you the same questions um, based kung paano mo lang siya ikukwento kung sino kaharap mo nagbabago yun. So, the next one is psychological profile. Psychological profile is uh, the normalcy in psychological tests. So, you are negative for neurotic, psychotic, sociopathic, and disturbances. Um, uh, lahat ng yan ay tinetest, okay, sa mga employees. Okay, even for us teachers, tinest kami. I think it was a 600, um, 600 item quiz that we have to take before we teach. Um, kung saan, um, they would simply read, um, and analyze kung ano yung state namin. So, they would ask, um, dun sa questionnaire, they would ask different situations. How would you react? Will you act in this way? Uh, will you act violently? Would you act neutral sa isang situation? So, 600 situations yung kailangan namin answeran. Um, and then, um, based from those 600 situations, they would 
uh, we would highlight ano siya tingin namin yung okay, ano yung mga magaganda and pangit na nangyari. Okay? Next is uh, personal character. Personal character is more of emotional literacy and mature values, attitude, and principles. Throughout your interview, they would ask you what, uh, what are the things that you value, um, ano yung mga masasabi mo sa isang situation, and doon nakakabuo na sila ng, um, ng personality or character na nakikita nila in a person. Usually, um, again, HR is the one um, na nag-handle yung mga interviews na yan. Uh, there will also be uh, trainings and testings, personal stories on how values and principles are being lived. Um, this is based on, let's say, what was the question? The question of, um, what is your biggest fear? Yung mga ganun. Yung mga, um, hindi naman connected dun sa trabaho mo, pero tinatanong nila sa'yo. Kasi they're trying to, to analyze what is the kind of character that you have. Let's say, um, was there ever a time that you felt um, stuck in a decision? And how did you react? Tapos, uh, based from your answers, again, they will formulate what kind of character you meron ka. And the last one is, of course, potential for growth. For potential for growth, there should be personal ambition, okay? um, need to achieve, excel, lead, review, and... Um, review on the previous five criteria. So, dito, um, kaya tinatanong ng mga employers, uh, what do you see in the next five years? What do you see in the next ten years? Kailangan may ambition sila na nakikita sa'yo. Kailangan, um, let's say, I want to grow in this company to be blah, 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 blah. Okay? So, with those answers, again, nakikita nila kung paano yung nagiging pananaw mo para din sa kumpanya. And, Paano mo na iisip kung anong gusto mong gawin for the company? If they see that you are, let's say, um, equipped and at the same time, um, nakikita nila na may potential ka, nakikita nila na kaya mo talaga mag-bring ng something on the table, then they would give it to you, the job. So that's a good thing. Okay? Next is routing. So routing naman is depending on um, the culture actually of the company itself. So, this is all about setting the career track. There are companies that practices um, a vertical ladder or the vertical managerial track or the technical track. So, pag sinabi natin vertical managerial track, you start from the very bottom. Um, yung sagot po ba na in the next five years, I want to be in your position is okay for HR or to know mayabang siya. It's okay. Okay? Um, I want to be you in the next five years. If that's the case, then try to do it. Okay? If kaya mo siyang i-fulfill in the next five years, then do it. Kung nakikita kasi ng mga employers na um, you really want to be someone okay, um, in the company, nakikita nila kung ano yung drive na meron ka, if it fits the kind of job na ina-applyan mo rin naman, then they would hire you for that. Okay? Some people kasi are very hesitant. Yung sasabihin nila, actually, I want to have a family. I want to have a, a, a stable income. That's very vague. Okay? That's, that's, that's a very general situation in life. Okay? So, um, parang sa buong future mo, hindi mo nakikita na nagtatrabaho ka pa dun para sa company. So, um, since you're not painting a picture wherein the company is there, then that's not a, a good response in that question. Pero with that, dun sa sinabi mo, um, Gregory, na um, I want to be in that particular position in the next five years based on kung sino yung interview then that's good. It, it's a good answer also. Okay? So don't, don't hesitate as long as yung job din na pinapasok mo is somehow dun papunta. Okay? So, again, um, going back to this one, routing. Um, pag sinabi natin vertical, managerial track, you start from the very bottom. Let's say, clerkship, okay, uh, yung pinaka mababa mo na entry level na job, and then you work your way up. Bago ka maging store manager, maging branch manager, 
naging um, let's say um, regional manager and then saka ka naging national manager and then saka ka naging uh, operations manager of the whole company um pwedeng ganun okay vertical managerial track is you start from the very bottom pataas okay ganun yung magiging track mo para dun sa company ganun ka nila i hire now for other companies naman, it's a technical track. Meaning, they will hire you and based from um, the competencies, based from the answers from your interview, um, based on skills na meron ka, they will fit you right in in a position na mas tugma dun sa mga skill set na meron ka na. Kasi, let's say for example, some people are already building their credentials. Eh. Like for you guys, um, meron sa inyo probably nag internship na. Meron naman sa inyo yung mga nag, um, meron ng mga ganap when it comes to other companies or nangongolekta na ng experiences from others. Okay? Internship is one way para makakuha kayo na magagandang mga experience from the company and they know kasi that you guys are students, are still students. So, uh, based dun sa mga naipon ninyong experience throughout time, okay, ipapasok ka nila ngayon sa posisyon na sa tingin nila pinakamaganda at pinakamaayos na pasukin ninyo. So that is more of the technical track. Okay? Based on your proficiency, let's say, hindi ka nadadaan sa pinakamababa, nandun ka na agad sa mga uh, managerial positions, executive positions, kasi yun yung mas tugma dun sa experience mo. Okay? Next is the quadrant C. Okay, so for Quadrant C, we have operational people. So for operational people, this seeks to attain goals similar, similarity among the different units of the organization. It is also, or it also aspires to achieve congruence between the goals of the organization and the goals of its people. Meaning the people and the organization must resonate as one. It must also, um, it is also about making people happy and assuring their well-being. So, um, dito naman, you look at how the operations could really affect the people and how people could affect the operations of the business. So, with that, you look at two R's, which is resonating and retaining. So, for this particular um, uh, slide, for example, retaining. For retaining, what you need to do is to make sure that your A players, your aces, okay, would stay. So it would be a matter of, let's say, giving them what they want, okay, when they want it. Um, some people would ask for additional compensation. Some people would ask for additional benefits. Some people would rather have, let's say, um, a better um, title when it comes to their positions and all that. Um, depending on eh, when, when it comes to the person. So, uh, depending on the person you ask, um, pwedeng pera ang kapalit para dun sa additional responsibilities. Pwede rin namang um, promotion ang gusto nila for, for uh, that matter. Um, you just simply need to ask, what is the right compensation? na ibibigay mo para sa kanila what is the right benefit na gusto nila makuha in order for you to actually keep these employees so um in retaining it's all about uh, having to hone diba? what you do is train what you do is train people and upon training these people alam mo na kung ano yung position na magfit sa kanila and because of that what you want is to keep them na let's say sila yung ginugroom mo to be the next um, CEO, CFO of the company. So if that's the case, how do you do that? How do you make sure that it, it would happen? So what you need to do now is keep them. And based from what they want, what they ask, um, kailangan mo sila alagaan. Some people kasi are being pirated by a lot of um, uh, companies. Kapag magaling ka and you're, you seem like uh, an asset of the company, they will take care of you. Okay? Kapag hindi ka naman nila nakikita as an asset and more of a liability ka na lang para dun sa, com uh, sa company, then they will let you go. Okay? Going back to the example of, um, let's say, dun sa subway, dun sa subway na commercial na pinakita ko sa inyo, yung, uh, yung pinaka 
naging face nila for the brand, they had to let him go because he became a big liability of the company. Na because of him, marami na sila losses, marami silang uh, parang ang dami nilang bad press and all that. So they had to let them let him go. But if you are an asset of the company and uh, they see the kind of skills na meron ka para dun sa mismo kumpanya, then uh, aalagaan ka nila. Ibibigyan nila kung ano yung gusto mo. Okay? Now, with the next one, again, we have resonating. So for resonating, this is all about working together and is uh, going to bring um, mutual benefit. So what we need to accomplish here is to make sure that you guys would work and bind as one. Okay? So resonating siya. Bakit? It is, it is in uh, the responsibility of the organization to fully articulate its goals meaning its vision, mission, and objectives, and translate these into measurable and attainable performance indicators based on clear key results area. What an organization um, do is to make sure that everyone's in harmony. Okay? Parang um, you are dancing in the same tune. Okay? Um, you're doing the work in order for the company to benefit. Okay? You are trying your best in order for you to reach a common purpose, which is what? The vision, mission, objectives of the company, right? So an organization that resonates with its people and employees who resonate with their management are more likely to have goal congruence. And that is uh, one of the biggest benefits that you get from one company. This means that the organization's goals are embraced and internalized by the people and the personal goals of the people are realized and fulfilled while serving the organization. Okay? So, um, hindi sila gumagawa lang ng trabaho dahil lang sa parang compensated sila to do that, but they actually see their own purpose as well. And because of that, they strive harder parang mas nagtatrabaho sila na mabuti kasi nakikita nila na, ah, okay, ito yung purpose ko for the company. Ito yung nararamdaman nilang fulfillment. And because of that fulfillment uh, that they have when it comes to their company, then it becomes better. Okay? It is also the organization's responsibility to determine the personal goals, needs, and wants of the employees in order to assess whether they are the right people for the job and whether they can function well within the cultural milieu of the enterprise. Again, resonating is about um, motivating and energizing people. The organization should explore the different ways of buying um, people's spirits. So um, again, kaya sila yung um, magkasama, si retaining and resonating. Um, you can only, okay, you can only retain people that you resonate with. You can only uh, resonate with the people that are worth and uh, would like to be retained in the company. So, um, sila yung dalawang connected dun sa quadrant na yan because they have to be together. So, um, again, it's working together in order for you to meet a common goal, a common purpose. Let's say, for example, in a team of sports, um, kaya naman kayo nag work as a team because you have this common goal for you to win in that particular game. And hindi sarili mo lang ang iniisip mo kapag naglalaro ka. You also need to think that will the team also um, suffer if I make this particular decision? Kapag ba ang bola ay hindi mo ipinasa? Okay? At sarili mo lang. Okay? Sarili mo lang. Dribble ka lang ng dribble and ayaw mo ipasa sa ibang tao. Ano naapektuhan nun? Yung buong a grupo, yung buong team mo. Okay? Kaya nga, ayaw natin sa mga bakaw, di ba? Ayaw natin dun sa mga taong um, feeling nila sila lang yung magaling. Okay? Or feeling nila sila lang kaya mag-carry ng buong team. What you need to do is find harmony and find, um, well, somewhere in between kung saan kayo both ways nag excel Okay? Now, we move on to the next quadrant or quadrant B, which is people uh, strategic. So, Quadrant D follows the footsteps of Quadrant A because any significant change in the institutional and HR strategies must be accompanied by the difficult transformation process of Quadrant B. 
This quadrant is the people's strategic dimensions of the HR function. This is all about retooling and recycling. So with this, retooling is all about improving the capabilities that your employees already have. So it is about changing their attitudes and behavior, creating a healthier corporate culture, and adopting more responsive approaches to greater customer service. So what do we mean by this one? What we simply mean, what we simply mean here is that it's it's about retraining, right? Retraining what they already know. So let's say um coming teachers, okay? To give you an example. Um bago magpasukan, pumapasok na kami, okay? Bago pa um bago pa mag-start yung school year, nauuna na kami. Why? We need to attend several trainings, webinars, um, konsan, um, pag-aaralan namin kung ano yung mga improve, improvements or updates sa uh, Blackboard, sa Zoom, para mas maging effective kami okay, as teachers. Especially now that we are in an online setting, um, kailangan namin ng maraming retooling, maraming uh, tools din kasi yung kailangan namin pag-aaralan. So, with that, we have to retrain how uh, how it is to teach in this new platform, in this new setup. Pano, uh, pano namin ma mapapakita na it's still the same na um, ang nagbago lang is the setup or the channel, but it's still the same thing or the same quality ang makukuha ninyo even before. So, new recruits usually have to have this particular trainings um, para matuto sila kung ano yung company culture, kung ano yung mga dapat nilang uh, i-expect from the people, from the customers that you have, um, ano yung expectations from both ways, ano yung mga common goals, ano yung purpose na kailangan i-fulfill for you to make the employee or make the company happier also. So, Close induction training may be necessary for generic skills that the organization wants all employees to learn. So, um, I remember before, noong bagong teacher pa lang kami, um, lahat pinag-aralan namin. As in, nag-aral kami when it comes to uh, lesson planning. Nag-aral kami ng kung paano gumagawa ng maayos na PowerPoint. Uh, pinag-aralan din namin kung paano yung tamang uh, conversation inside the classroom setting. Um, pinag-aralan din namin kung paano yung right terms or communication na kailangan namin gamitin when it comes to different people. Um, those are part of the retooling. Even um, mental health, kung paano namin matitrace, madidetect kung sino yung nagkakaroon ng mga problems and sino yung dapat namin um, bantayan when it comes to these particular status. So, yun din sa mga sinasabi din sa amin for us to be aware of certain situations. Okay? Next is recycling. So, recycling is, um, well, recycling affords people uh, the chance to change jobs or even careers. It allows people to reinvent themselves. Now, what do we mean by this one? The best of recycling, what we do is uh, reuse another thing for another purpose. Okay? So it's somehow the same. For example, let's say you have been stuck in a position for, let's say, 10 years, marketing yung ginagawa mo. And ma even though that you are good in marketing, hindi mo na nakikitaan ng growth yourself mo. Why? You have already exhausted yourself for the next for, for a decade already. You've already given so much for the company in that particular field. And wala ka ng iba na maibibigay pa wala ka ng um, other wow factors pa na kayang ipakita kasi nga na-exhaust mo na lahat. So, they will give you a chance. Okay? It is through recycling that they will uh, likely see ano pa kaya yung magagawa niya. Let's say, uh, they were able to miss out na ah, magaling ka rin pala when it comes to people, handling people, magaling ka pala when it comes to communication. You get to... Um, interact at the same time people love talking to you so pwede na yung job mo instead ng marketing ka and nandun ka sa strategic side pwedeng nandun ka na sa my sales pwedeng ilipat ka, na, uh, ilipat ka nila dun sa other skills na gusto mo pang ihon that is recycling so 
recycling is more um, possible in an organization that provides education and training opportunities outside those given for existing job requirements. So again, they are trying to hone what additional skills you have um, that you want to exercise. Because some of us are, let's say, have been doing the same thing and wala na eh, pa, parang paulit-ulit na lang or parang um, alam mo na kung ano yung gagawin mo doon so hindi mo na rin alam kung ano pa yung pwede mong sabihin additional things na pwede mo pang sabihin so what you want now is a new environment new set of people to work with pwede ganun okay so with that we are done with HR